In this episode, I'm gonna show how to make professional looking Instagram reels for real estate listings, whether that's just using photos or video or both. I'm gonna show this example where we're gonna be using both so that you can see how to do it because there are some challenges. First thing to be aware of is that when you're making these Instagram reels, it's not the 59 second mark that everybody talks about that's the magic mark for the length. It's usually about 30 seconds. If we take a look at insights on most Instagram Instagram reels, we see that about 40% really only watch until about halfway through about 15 seconds. So the attention span is very short, shorter than what a lot of people think on Instagram. So it's something that you can offer to your clients as, do you want a 30 second reel? Do you want a 60 second reel? You can charge a very small amount for let's say a 30 second reel, maybe just using photos, which I'm gonna show how to make them very impactful in this tutorial. But you can also then take some of your reused video. If you've been shooting video for a listing, then you can do this. Now, it's another option for real estate video to begin with. Yes, you can use your phone, but you can also use 4K footage. I'm going to show you how to format the timeline so that you can get that nice vertical representation, not lose any pixels, still maintain very high quality, keep it short, keep it impactful. So let's get started. So here I have some footage that I've collected that we're going to use. I've got a few photos here, and then I've also got some video, and I also have then some music. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, I'm gonna be using Premiere Pro to do this, Adobe's Premiere Pro, but if you're not familiar with Adobe Premiere Pro, don't worry, we're gonna cover a lot of the basics here. Also, if you're not familiar with doing real estate videos and using Premiere Pro, then you can also check out my book on basic videography for real estate. I have a link to that and other pertinent information down in the description for this video. But if we take a look at some of the footage that we've got here, so this is a picture I'm gonna use. It's a very large living room. And also here's a kitchen shot. We've got a nice billiard room here. And these are all photos that I've taken from various houses, and I'm just gonna say that this is one house. Also, here's a uh, movie theater from another house that I did, and we've got this video here. You can see that this video is gonna track, it's gonna be one that zooms out. We've got another video that also then flies into the house, but the challenge that we have with all this is that this is wide format, but when we do the video, we want it to be 1080 wide, by 1920 high. So let's get started on setting that up. So I've already opened up a project. It's completely empty. It has nothing. You would just make a new project and don't worry about adding anything to it yet. The next thing you want to do is to create a sequence. And what you want to do to do that is go up to file and you want to say then new and sequence. Now you can select just under digital SLR at 1080 and your typical 1080, let's say 30 frames per second. But what you do first though, and this is the trick, is go to the settings. And in the settings, you wanna change the frame size. So instead of 1920 by 1080, we wanna reverse that. So let's put in here, we're going to go to 1080 by 1920, and that's going to change it. When we do, we can see then the preview also changed down here. This is pretty much default stuff here for the uh, the video preview, whether you're using QuickTime and also the sample rate. That just comes with that standard preset that's there. All that we're doing is just changing then to 1080 wide by 1920 high, then you click OK. So you can see now we have over here our project and this is going to then be filled up with our content. It's going to be at the appropriate width and height to show as an Instagram reel. Now we need to add our uh, footage to it. So go down here, there's a little window and it'll say project and it'll have the name of your project that you started. When you click on that, that's all the media. The first thing in there is the sequence that we just created. Next is you want to add your footage. The way that I like to do it is to drag and drop from just using, in this case, I'm on Windows, Windows Explorer. There's a lot of ways to import the footage, but what I'm gonna do is grab all this. I just did Control A to select it, and now let's drag that over into this area 
that little window and it'll automatically then import all those items. Okay, so now that all of those are there, the first thing you wanna do is add your music. Now the music that I'm gonna add here, I got out of uh, Soundstripe and it's a pretty nice one. It's by Ian uh, Kolosky and it's The Climb. It's one I use a lot on videos. It's, you can hear it here going in the background. So very impactful. What we're gonna do is just drag that whole thing onto the timeline. That's what's over here. If you're not familiar with it, this is time going forward. You can zoom in on time. I wish we could do this in real life, but we're gonna zoom in on time so we can see more of the timeline. That's with the slider down here. You can see here the A is audio, V that's for video. You can have multiple different video here. So what we're gonna do though first is remember that key to keeping this at about 30 seconds. To do that, what we can do is jump to the 30 second mark. You can either drag this little timeline over here to where it's 30 seconds, but you see over here, it's also changing. So you can click on here and then you can edit that so that we go to let's say 30 and then to zero seconds like that. When I hit enter, then it jumps there. Now what I can do is I can use the razor tool it's also known as the cut tool. It's over here, the razor tool. If you were to press C on your keyboard, you'd also get it. And then go down here, and when you get near that line and you press it, it cuts it. Now take the arrow key, or you can press V on your keyboard. You press that little tail, press delete, it's done. Now we can really go in a lot closer on the timeline and see what's going on. If you click this, it'll take you right to the beginning. Then you can get a better idea of how you wanna zoom on that timeline. We'll make this just a little bit bigger. You can drag these little uh, areas here so you can see more of the, like this case happens to be the waveform of the audio. Anyways, so we see what's going on here. The first thing we wanna do now is start adding our other footage to it. And to do that, remember we have a couple videos and one of them is gonna be flying in, that's this video here. So if I double click on that video over here on its icon, it shows up here in this preview window. And then I can drag this little playhead and I can see where I wanna start and where I wanna end. So one thing to bear in mind is this is going to be skinny because this is wide, this is not. So a couple things we can do, we can pan around on it, and it's something I'm gonna show in the photo footage. But here, let's say that we wanna start right about there. Click this little marker here, and then you can start dragging more to about, let's say there. Uh, come down on the house to right there. Okay, now that we have that section selected, if you drag this icon here, this is gonna be video only, this is audio only. So we drag the video only onto our timeline, and we'll place it right there at the beginning. Now you can see how it's not exactly centered. If we started playing this, you'd see it's going in on the house, but it wasn't exactly where we wanted it. So what we can do now is go up here to effects controls and up here we can position it. So one thing I like to do, here's your X position, Y position. What I like to do is just hold your mouse over here, click, and then you can drag this and you can see it's changing the number. And notice also over here on the video itself as I do that, how it's moving that into position. So with that in position now, let's go ahead and play it and see what that looks like. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn our audio off for just a second by hitting mute down here. And now let's play it. Let's see what that looks like. So that's not too bad, that's looking pretty good. But as it started getting closer to where the pool was, we lost that and I'd kinda like to show a little bit more. So what we wanna do is something we'll do in the photos and that's to animate it. So right at about at this point, I wanna animate over a little bit to the pool. We're using the arrow tool, you click on that clip right there. And then you click these little icons here. This is position, this is scale. We just wanna change the position. We wanna animate how that position is gonna change. When you click that little stopwatch thing, that means you're now animating. Now we wanna to go to the end of this clip. And if you do shift end, it goes right to the end of that clip. 
Now position where you'd like it, and we'll just once again, just hover over the X right over here, the X axis, the X position, and I will click and then drag, and you can see it's moving. If you watch the video, I'm dragging that video over. So now I've got it animated to where it's moving like this, then it hits that animation spot, and boom, it zoomed in a little bit more. So we got more control. Now, sometimes you'll wanna do this to the entire video, but this is how you animate and zoom to different areas. Don't worry if you didn't quite catch that because we're gonna do that now with some photos. So now that we have this into position and we can say that's good, is it really gonna go in time with our music? Maybe we wanna do that. So let's go back over here and go here and play it and let's listen. That's pretty good, but it doesn't really transition until it hits. Boom, there. And you can see that if we zoom in here, there's a peak right here. I'll just expand this a little bit more. You can see there's a peak and that's where those, that drum beat comes in. Boom. So I'm putting the playhead there and then I'm just gonna expand the video to that section. And what that'll do now is it'll keep playing so it goes and it'll transition there. And that's where our next piece will come in. So let's select this. Once again, the arrow tool is selected. Do shift end to go to the end of it. And now let's take a look at something else we wanna add. Let's add a photo. And let's say that we wanna add in the most impactful photo, which would be, I don't know, the kitchen, the living room. Let's take this one. This will be a good example. All that you need to do is take this and click and drag it over here on the timeline and it should snap in place. If it isn't, then you wanna make sure that you have over here, snap in timeline, select it. Now the next thing is the length. If you start dragging from the end here, it'll show you the duration. We'll zoom out here a little bit so you can get a better idea. But here you can see that little overhang. It shows four seconds, 504, five seconds. Five seconds is pretty good if you're gonna do the animation that I'm going to show you. But we also wanna see if this transitions well with music to make it impactful. So I'm gonna play until I hear a good transition point. right there. So that's a good transition point right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and move the playhead. I'm gonna, excuse me, drag the video to that point. Now, with that selected, press Shift Home and you'll be at the beginning of the video. Now you noticed it's really big. If we go up to the Effect Controls window up here, we can see that it's because it's scaled at 100. So if you click that little the little uh, down uh, arrow, you can then change your scale by just changing the slider. So let's just get it to fit. It would be right about there. That'd be good if we wanted to pan. But in this case, I wanna do something that I, I call the explode and pan. And what we wanna do is explode into it. And it's real simple to do. What you first do is you right click on that clip and then you say set to frame size. Now you can see it just set it to frame size. It's very small but we're gonna explode and pan. And to do that, we wanna start animating both position and scale from the very beginning. So here, click position and then click scale. So both of those stopwatches are selected. They're both being animated. Now we wanna just play and you can do it here or you can also press space bar to play and stop. So I'll just go in about a second, right about there. Now this is where we're gonna explode and then we'll pan. So we wanna make a mark by doing this and this. You click both of those little icons, it sets a new animation point, new keyframe. So now what we wanna do is scale it so that it fits the frame, which is good. And then we wanna drag ourselves to where we wanna start panning. Let's say we wanna start panning there. Then over here, click Shift End. We're now at the end of that frame where it's gonna to animate to and here, then we can click and drag this over to where we're now going to be at this position over on the other side, right about there. Okay, now let's watch what happens. I'll, I'll just mute the audio real quick so we can see it. But as then we transition into it, it explodes and then pans across. Now that's one variation that you can do. Another type of animation is where we'll just zoom in or zoom out. Let's take a look at that billiard room. And that was, let's say, this one here. Now, what we wanna do here, it'd be nice just to zoom in and not have to necessarily explode and pan. 
And the reason we're able to do this is because these are very large photos that we've got tons of pixels to play with. So we, got, we can do all kinds of animation stuff on here. So let's drag this one onto the timeline. And once again, I'll turn the music on for just a second so we can find a good transition point to stop at. Right there, where it starts changing a good transition point. It's a four seconds, 4.16 seconds. Anyways, now let's go and do shift home, which will take us to the beginning of that clip. Go up to the effect controls window and then with scale, we want to zoom out until it's just at about 100%. Okay, now if we just wanna zoom in on this table, which I probably would do the whole room, but let's just do this as an example. What I would do is hit scale and that's it. Then do shift end, which then moves the playhead to the end of that clip. And then you would zoom in just a little bit like that. Okay, so now when we play that back, you'll see that zoom very slowly. Now let's say that you didn't like that and you wanted to do something different. You don't have to start over. Let's do shift home and go back out here. Now what you can do is if you click the stopwatch again, it'll tell you oh, you're gonna delete the existing keyframes. You wanna continue and say, yes, you wanna do that. Let's say now that we wanna position it and pan it just a little bit from this position. So we would do both scale and position. And then once again, we'll do shift end to go to the end of that clip. And then we'll figure out how much we wanna zoom in. Let's say there, we also wanna change the Y axis like we're panning down. So we'll click and drag on the Y axis. And let's also say that we wanted to then pan over just a little bit. So we can see a little bit more of the room that it goes to those windows. So now our, our zoom is gonna look different when we play that. Good, like that. Now you just continue doing this for the rest of the photos and of course the video until you hit the length that you want. So to save you some time, I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'm gonna show you how to then render and get this ready to get on Instagram. Okay, so now we've got all the footage on there. We have a 30 second video. Let's take a look at it just real quick here in our preview before we render it because there's a couple more things we probably wanna do. So let's click the playhead to go to the beginning. It's this one right here, just click that. And now we can hit play up here and watch what happens. So, so far so good, or a little bit of a pan, or exploding pan, that's looking pretty good. Nice exploding pan. Oh. There's our zoom and pan, good. And here's the other ones I added. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but we probably wanna do a fade out with the audio, because remember we clipped that. So what you can do is go to the effects window. You should see it here, and if not, then sometimes you can also, you can go up to effects over here. You can see we were in editing. You can select effects, and then you can select different effects from down here. But let's go back to editing. I also have the effects down here in this pane. A lot of ways that you can rearrange this. What we wanna do is zoom in a little bit here on this timeline, and let's go to audio transitions. Go to crossfade, and then you want exponential fade. Click and drag that over onto the audio timeline. If you double click on it, then you'll see the transition. It's at one second. Let's just leave it at that and hear what that sounds like. And one second's probably good enough. So let's say this is fine. We're now ready to export this and put it out onto Instagram. So what you would do now, everything's done. We'll save the, the project. And I just did that by Control S, but you can obviously do that from the save menu as well. But to export it, what you would do is go to export and then to media. That's file, export, and then media. 
which can take a few seconds to load. I cut the video just to save you some time. But now what we need to do is first, we're going to set where that should be. So you can set the directory and then the name of it by clicking first on the directory, select the directory where you'd like that to be, press save. Then you can change the name and we'll just change this. It always comes up with what the sequence name is, but we'll call this IG demo finished. Okay. Now that you've got the name selected, it could have a preset, something else that's already been selected. Your best option for this is expand the video section here then click on match source. And that'll take a, a little bit of time as Adobe does all of its stuff with your graphics card and whatnot, but it'll automatically then detect, and you can see here it detected it as 1080 wide by 1920 high. Also the frame rate, 30 frames per second, which technically is 29.97. Now what I like to do is if you click on more, then you'll see use maximum render quality is selected. That's something that I select and it was selected prior to me doing this. If you scroll down then, also take a look at bitrate settings. In here, the bitrate encoding typically is CBR or VBR one pass, use VBR two pass. And then I like to use a target bitrate of 16 and a maximum bitrate of 48. That's something else that I talk about also when doing real estate videos to begin with, and that just gets me a good high quality. And then when you're done, you just press export. And then it'll take a little bit of time for a Premiere Pro to export this. So I'll stop the video and we'll repick up once it is finished. So on my machine, it took about 45 seconds to render that. It's not very big and you can see here's the file. If I were to right click that and take a look at the properties, go to details, I can see that it's 1080 wide, 1920 high, 30 frames per second, click okay. But when we take a look at this and play it, we can see that it now looks like this.